Hi everyone, the Lone Wolf here and welcome back to EVE Talk, your weekly look at the market in EVE Online. And we of course do have some new information, although it's still rather cryptic. Uh, most of it is of course coming from the new trailer that CCP released about the uh, second quadrant. It's called Eclipse and uh, I liked it. Not my favorite uh, trailer, but it, I think it is trying to convey a message uh, about uh, the second quadrant, the next chapter. They're also calling it in the invasion vision expansion uh, what I liked about it well uh, uh, new ships I think there's a very strong sh uh, chance that uh, that we'll see new ships that's always uh, very interesting of course lots of speak people speculating on like is it Concord ship what what is it uh, I'm, I'm gonna go with uh, anti-capital bomber uh, as my guess on that one. Uh, I love the fact that we are continuing the uh, Triglavian storyline. Um, I've been pretty interested uh, in that uh, from the start. I love the lore in EVE Online. So seeing uh, some progress on that is uh, really welcome. Again, I'm gonna uh, speculate here. Uh, I think that they will eventually try to carve out a system uh, or, or a number of systems and basically become the fifth uh, race in New Eden. Uh, maybe they're like forced to uh, to, to leave the abyss or something like that. We will of course see how that works out as well. Uh, very exciting of course, uh, gates closing down and then the goal, the stated goal here to shift the balance of power in New Eden. That could mean so many things, but uh, lots of cool possibilities there. So yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very curious as to what all of this will bring. And uh, well, it should start next week already with some interesting events. Uh, so uh, I'll try to, uh, to join all of that and keep you guys up to date, of course. Uh, Maybe another bit of news that I do want to mention quickly uh, is uh, the new Plex for Good Drive. Rather controversial. I can fully understand where the controversy uh, comes from, uh, in my opinion. If I quickly make the analysis, m uh, most, if not all, other Plex for Good Drives that I have uh, seen were for like the Icelandic Red Cross, the Australian Red Cross, uh, right? A, a relatively small. Um, organization uh, that uh, needs to help with a very specific goal where you can understand that these people are punching way above their weight. Here we're talking about the World Health Organization, something that I think for most people, I mean, I don't know anything really about the World Health Organization except what I've heard uh, about it uh, in, in like news, media, stuff like that. And uh, it, it seems like an organization that is so large uh, that I don't understand that Plex for Good Drive uh, would be going there. Also, not without its controversy, uh, not without uh, its influence on a political scale that is so large, it, it feels completely unrelatable uh, to, me, to me personally. So I can definitely understand the hesitation that people have uh, when it comes to this uh, Plex for Good Drive. feels like sort of a, a weird choice. I understand that the pandemic is something uh, like, like a real problem, <laughs> um, but um, uh, I'm not sure if uh, Plex for Good Drive is, is really uh, the best choice. Still, it's what CCB has done and uh, of course we'll see how all of that works out. Next up, we'll take a quick look at the new Eden store. Uh, I already took a look at it and from the Eve Pulse, we know that uh, we've got some new skin uh, skins, the Metamataria skins for the Triglavian ships. I think we're now going to switch from battleships frigates with the um, frigate escape bay to some uh, Triglavian stuff uh, with the Triglavian storyline continuing, of course. Interesting looking, uh, not exactly, although on the Zenitra here, I do think it looks really great. Um, on, the, on, on the smaller ships, I'm not sure. I think I prefer the more toned down ones. Uh, even the ones that you can get with the DLP are uh, really amazing looking, uh, but they're there if you want them. Other than that, I just see some bundles, no real sales to report this week, which means that we get to move on to the market itself. As always, we're going to start with Plex and stuff and that is going to be at 4.25. 425 like that let's let's press down this uh, plex and uh, well you can tell from the chart one year low point another massive drop uh, volumes are up uh, a bit but not really like you can see here on on uh, very specific sales you can see the volumes generally double here we've got like maybe 10 20 20 
20% more uh, for, a, for a more sustained period of time. And so I'm going to ascribe to the theory that I read on Reddit uh, in a thread about uh, this uh, decline in the price of plagues. Well, with the lockdown uh, in uh, in most of Europe for sure, in, in, in uh, the United States starting as well, basically in most of the Western world and in other parts, of, it's basically almost all of humanity uh, that is starting to get under a lockdown for this um, for this pandemic. Um, lots of people have a lot of time to spend on hobbies uh, and uh, I think uh, the purchasing of Plex might just be going up massively for people that want to try out EVE, get into specific ships, do certain content right away. Um, so as a result, quite a bit of Plex being purchased, perhaps some dumping as well uh, to try and convert this into liquid disk so that you're more mobile for uh, well the potential shift of power that's happening. I think that that, that could be possible as well although it already seemed like around 3 3.2 million was a pretty good place considering the entire one year chart uh, to keep your plex at well turns out i was wrong we are driving the price uh, lower than that 3.2 million for the sellers in Jita, 2.9 million for the buyers in Jita. that's not a pretty wide gap opening up and this is probably going to be the reason if we take a look at player owned trade hubs yep going to 3.1 million and even just below that and then when it comes to the buyers there less than 2.9 million so you are now buying plex for less than 3 million in my opinion if that's what you want to do uh, a bit unexpected uh, again as i've said i think real life the real life situation is going to be a main driver here and of course a great opportunity for people that want to try to plex their account uh, through their in-game efforts rather than pony up the real life money at this point it makes it a lot more doable uh, when you have to pay less than 3 million for a plex rather than 4 million or even more than that so uh, pretty good news i also think for the accessibility of that dream for newer players so hopefully it'll work out and uh, we'll keep a close eye on it of course because it is unexpected we are definitely breaking a trend i thought here we were hesitating and then maybe on some hype some news we would actually go up on, on some more consumption uh, but it's the exact opposite that's happening at the moment for the multiple pilot train certificate i'm expecting the same it is indeed the same we are in fact dropping to less than 1.5 billion for the average price uh, a big part of this is going to be a bit of a lack of uh, demand here 1.6 billion in Jita, a bit above 1.5 billion in the player owned trade hubs buyers in Jita, 1.2 uh, billion and a bit above that and we go up to 1.4 billion actually in the player owned trade hubs that has really taken over the multiple pilot train certificate trade um, interesting of course and I think just bringing it in line, 1.5 billion, 500 times 3 million, uh, something like that does make sense. That math always has to check out at least a little bit, of course. Then we've got our skill extractors following the exact same pattern. Um, we're talking now 350 million, just below that for the sellers, 330 for the buyers. Well, we have basically gone below 350 million, one year low point yet again. Uh, definitely an opportunity if you want in on this for the first time uh, and if you want to earn this through in-game uh, efforts uh, to do this. Also, maybe one thing to keep in mind, this might also be like a little bit of speculation on um, ISK becoming worth more, right? We, we know from the dev blog that CCP basically wants our efforts, uh, wants the, the economical outlook to be less from uh, plentiful supplies of everything and ISK to uh, a period where they want us to, to have less than what we would normally need or what they would I ideally want. And that does mean that any effort you put in the game during a period like that, you could call it a recession or a depression uh, in my opinion, um, uh, actually is is, is going to be worth a lot more uh, in my opinion. And so we could just see uh, a little bit of influence on that as well. People saying, well, Plex might not be uh, the, the right uh, currency to, to hold effort into anymore. It might become ISK uh, if that becomes that much harder to make. It might become minerals if those become that much harder to produce, to transport and things like that. So very interesting, I think, as well from an economic standpoint, um, what CCP is trying to do. Um, I don't think in real life uh, you would want to do that. It, it could be in massive shocks. And um, well, if we look at what's happening in the real world, I'd say it's the exact opposite that they're trying to do. Uh, they're trying to just open all the spigots to make plentiful, even more plentiful. 
Um, but uh, here in EVE Online, we are going to do what uh, at least some some uh, some uh, people that I follow, not sure if you guys know him, but uh, I do follow like Peter Schiff on his podcast and things like that. Uh, EVE Online and CCP are going to try to make what, in, in their opinion, is the right choice. So it's going to be really interesting, I think, also maybe making a comparison between like what happens in EVE, what happens with Plex, and what happens in the real life world uh, with, uh, with basically lots of currency creation and things like that from central banks. Massively interesting for me personally. I hope it, uh, it's also interesting for you guys uh, if you follow Eve Talk. Uh, next up here we have the uh, skill injectors. We'll start as always with the large skill injectors that are not suffering that much from the decline in Plex just yet. I think it basically needs a little bit more time, but it must also be noted that we're pretty close to a one year low point, well away from the 800 million at the average price. In fact, it's 796 million for the sellers in player on trade hubs, going up to 820 in Jita, still a pretty decent premium but look at that gap here 757 million for the buyers in Jita, and they only go up to 758.5 million as well so there's gonna be more pressure on this one I do think we have an opportunity to wait <laughs> and then to buy large scale injectors at an even lower price in the upcoming weeks especially if the trends of course in Plex uh, confirm themselves of that we've got these small scale injectors that are Again, for what the fourth, fifth week uh, in a row uh, doing some weird stuff that is not in line with what we're seeing with the large scale injectors, which is really weird because large scale injectors basically get divided into small scale injectors, where loss, uh, uh, the, the large ones are going down in price right now in a more steady uh, space. Look at this a bump up uh, for the small scale injectors, volumes up. Um, so that must mean some, some increased amount coming from somewhere. 163 million for the sellers, 150 for the buyers. Um, my uh, personal speculation on that, lots of new players uh, coming uh, to the game and what's more affordable? Well, a small scale injector for 160 million ISK uh, is uh, far more doable in a reasonable amount of time in game uh, compared to the large scale injectors that are still 800 million ISK. That is quite expensive uh, at the moment. So I think here, uh, yeah, the small scale injectors turning out to be a blessing for newer players, making that access to uh, skill points uh, from the general pool uh, more accessible. Or, or better I should say here then we've got the daily alpha injectors that are trying to stay above 40 million on a five-day moving average uh, but definitely dipping below that on some days 41.4 million for the sellers 37 to 36 million for the buyers still pretty damn low if we look at this uh, entire one-year chart um, a little bit surprising to me how how it is able to stay this low uh, especially because of course we come from 70 million is and keep in mind this is a completely independent uh, market from everything else here because you buy this straight from uh, CCP from the store and uh, what caused this decline in prices to 30 40 million range were sales we see that from these massive volumes and if you remember here October November we got these these uh, these sales in the daily alpha injectors that caused a lot of volume to come into the market but here in the last couple of months very very narrow increase in price for the uh, amount of time that we're spending here I think most of these volumes should should be absorbed by the market at this point it's just not happening um yeah, the closer to 30 million here, uh, that uh, or, or definitely below 40 million, um, doesn't seem like that bad of an investment for the longer term uh, when it comes to uh, these daily alpha injectors. And finally, we've got our hyper course, the uh, currency for the well, the gambling, uh, the raffle mechanic in Eve Online. These are going down to 320,000 disc, uh, 315 for the first seller, 295,000 for the buyers. Buyers going below 300,000 disc. I think it also means that. Uh, yeah, the uh, Hypernet Relay, uh, it'll probably have a strong niche of players that are using it, but I don't think it is going mainstream um, either. We'll see. Uh, hopefully CCP at some point comes out with numbers on that. Next up, we've got the mineral market coming in at 14.20. And uh, here, of course, we should see some interesting speculation, uh, I think, on all of this. Uh, a bit of surprise on this chart. We went to 11 ISK last week, and yet we only see the jump up to like 10-ish, and uh, we're staying there. Now, of course, very noticeable one-year high point. We're talking, and we gotta put that filter back on here, 10.20 ISK for Tritanium. 
uh, which is uh, a very good price even historically speaking definitely well above average uh, you're getting a lot of reward for mining uh, tritanium at the moment even in high sec and 9.2 for the buyers is substantially uh, high as well basically uh, lots of uh, demand for tritanium not enough supply anymore in high sec and i think that we are seeing uh, more and more of a drying up of uh, of the stocks as well because these volumes are definitely not very large 20 million 90 million units uh, remember the days of the plentiful 300 million units you know that's like the biggest order in quite a bit of browsing and we get to go down to 1067 for 1.1 billion units remember the days when we were completely in decline and below 5 isk 2 billion 3 billion units were normal orders that we would see across this entire supply chain here so um, the drought is definitely having a pretty big impact on the price of Tritanium at the moment. Uh, next up here we get Pyrite, able to maintain a price of around 8 isk. Uh, not that much of a surprise that it's not moving as much because of course, uh, as we all know from the dev block on Moon Mining, Pyrite and Mixlon are remaining in the, mist, uh, in the mix for those or they are four moons or something like that. 790 for the sellers, sellers forced below uh, a disc on a bit of dumping. Look at that. Um, this is completely abnormal uh, in the sense that Tritanium is far more plentiful um, uh, an hour, I would say, or, or per cubic meter of ore than pyrite and yet here we see that dumping of 2 billion units in 4 or this is one player that's dumping uh, 8 billion units probably uh, trying to sell them at 793 competition is starting below that and so there is almost no opportunity for pyrite to break out and supply should actually remain strong after that we've got the Mexon market that's also at the top end of the chart but 70 is is not that unusual that crazy a price compared to the 10 is for titanium this is really very reasonable same reason again Mixelon still in the mix from moon mining 70.5 for the sellers 64 for the buyers i think part of this might be that ccp has decided they don't want to completely gut the 00, zero experience and maybe uh, try to keep some reasons for uh, the uh, the moon mining to stay alive uh, remember Mixelon, the reason why it has not declined as much as uh, pyrite and and isogen over the last couple of years is because it is the number one bottleneck uh, in, uh, in, in uh, local mining compared to local production in zero zero and so keeping that in a mix might just be enough to keep at least some moon mining activities and at the moment we're definitely seeing the price remain at a high boundary but in check as well so Mixlon doing all right volume wise it's definitely not big 12 million and then everything else below 10 million units is not that much uh, supply so I don't see its decline anytime soon uh, but uh, we're, we're definitely not breaking out all of a sudden either. After that, we've got Isogen um, staying above 20 is pretty uh, good performance on this one as well. Um, although remember, historically speaking, Isogen 150, 200 disc was definitely uh, a possibility. So uh, the biggest casualty of uh, basically the um, the time of plenty in uh, resources in EVE Online. 21 is for the sellers and 20 is for the buyers. Volumes you can see are definitely done as well uh, for a lot of these orders, right? 400,000 units, 700,000 units. Doesn't feel that uh, normal or average, but what I fear in Isogen, in the Isogen market specifically, is that there are still massive, massive stocks out there. You can see that from 115 million, another 250 million units here. Uh, that is a lot, and I think that that is because Isogen has been the biggest casualty. It declined uh, like by 90% in price, I think, over the long term here. And the reason is it was really massively oversupplied compared to the consumption of uh, of uh, Isogen in the game in general. And as a result, we get this uh, price range uh, that uh, yeah, is just not moving that much. And these volumes that are staying up because people still have really big stocks available uh, across the board. After that, we've got the Noxium market that is continuing a slow decline after peaking to 450. It's staying above its average, but not by that much anymore. Either 357 for the sellers and 327 for the buyers. Bit of margin here. And so we do want to go down in price. Demand is not uh, really catching up, but it must also be said that we're keeping things pretty stable, I think, because supply is not that plenty for either. 1 million, 2 million units and everything else. Most of these below a million units, that is not a lot of Noxium again compared to just a couple of months ago. 
Next to that we have the Zydrine market and uh, this one is going for a one year high point making its way uh, again above 600 ISK. In fact by quite a bit 663 ISK for the sellers, 572 for the buyers and here I think we can see uh, the changes to moon mining that will have its effect. You can't just grab a lot of Zydrine and make a side if I'm not mistaken from the moons anymore. Look at these volumes they are quite pitiful uh, what used to be regularly couple million here couple million there which you could get on a weekly bi-weekly basis from a high sick moon. Now this is completely gone and uh, the volumes are dropping substantially which I think is also the reason why Megasite is jumping back up to above 500 disc here 550 for the sellers and 467 for the buyers uh, basically another move on the change to moon mining uh, I'm not sure about the details actually on Megasite and Zydrine is that still available in some moons just not in Isaac anymore I think that's entirely possible um, if you know let me know in the comments after that we've got the Morphite market that is staying really strong about 15,000 disc, 18,000 in fact for the sellers. Uh, player owned trade hub, do you have something to do with that? Not really. And then 15,800 for the buyers. Morphite of course the outlier uh, mineral because it is tied to the tech 2 economy, not so much to the tech 1 economy, also needed in implants. Um, a very very strong performance if you are coming back to the game and last year you bought this stuff for 7500 disc you can more than double your isk right now uh, by doing a sale of course it is all about production i think at the moment for resources and the rawest resources are the minerals as so all of these are actually knowing sort of a boom time relative uh, in price at least relative to what we have seen in the last couple of years because ccp has announced of course that drought period all right, in just a moment we're going for PI, but uh, people ask me to uh, drink enough so that my uh, voice doesn't become completely dry, so let's do that. <clears throat> and there we go, a little bit of water, and uh, we're moving on to PI at 22 minutes. Okay, here, let's see if the story is changing, but uh, I think most of you guys know from the last couple of weeks that the story has been not enough demand uh, in the PI markets. A little bit of speculation on advanced PI materials, of course. Here are the broadcast notes, able to stay above 2 million, I think. 2.2 for the sellers, 1.9 for the buyers. So, excuse me. Um, for these broadcast notes, uh, we get a little bit of speculation uh, from the trailer. There might be some speculation on new structures or different structures or structure stuff. Um, but uh, a lot of people do think that the, the massive one that we saw was actually the revamped Gita 4.4. All of that is speculation, of course, but I can understand a slight premium on advanced PI materials uh, even after the trailer. Uh, but then, of course, we come to construction blocks and here we can see that slump again. 9,000 disc on the chart, 10,350 for the uh, sellers, 9,500 for the buyers. So we're a bit above that still, uh, but clearly we're trading below average. And the main reason is all of these are the goods for sale and these are the buyers. So we've got a little bit of a demand problem still in the PI market. Uh, who knows? Here we might also get that little bit of speculation. Of course, we saw... Um, uh, the uh, Triglavian uh, Zoria Triglav walking on a planet. We saw the Triglavians do something to a star uh, that is of course going to be related to the eclipse title of, of the next chapter and uh, who knows what that means of course for the planets and the PI there as well uh, but uh, for now we're not seeing any real moves on that on the market here for instance consumer electronics one year low point um, 9000 for the sellers and 8000 disc for the buyers very very cheap of course and uh, if we want to do that uh, supply demand here again supply it's finally drying up a little bit uh, now that we've reached that one year low point but it is still like twice three times more than the uh, than the demand uh, number of orders and you can clearly see uh, that uh, we're not doing too well in price for coolants next we get a little bit of a jump up keep one thing in mind we're jumping up from 10,000 disc a one-year low point on a 
one volume spike so basically this is a little bit of speculation bring the price back to a more average price 11750 for the sellers 11740 for the buyers uh, buyers forced up a little bit at least by this move but i don't think it's gonna loss too much uh, because here again you can quickly see that supply starts to overtake demand very quickly so they jump back to averages prices for coolants but i don't think it's gonna last that long our one exception cryoprotectant solutions able to stay above 200k 204,000 for the sellers 185 for the buyers buyers do want to go lower um but basically we got lots of new implants in the game that need these cryoprotectant solutions so we get increased demand for this one and uh, they're able to still come on that massive premium Enriched uranium are staying decently flat, so this is reasonable, but clearly as well a little bit below average. Uh, 13,000 for the first seller, 14,000 for most, 13,000 for the buyers. It's definitely still a, a very reasonable price. Uh, very good to see, of course, at least one P uh, fuel related PI material knows some demand, some more stability. It's also the reason why I tend to focus on producing these rather than uh, some of the others, uh, because they tend to be more stable. Uh, uh, than, than quite a few uh, other PI materials. Integrity response rows, here again we have that speculative uh, pop up to 3 million isk and now we are paying the price for that. We're back uh, to that, let's say less than average 2.25 million on the chart. 2.35 for the sellers, less than 2 million by quite a bit, 1.9 for the buyers. Putting some pressure on that price here. Our mechanical parts are trying to stay above 10,000 discs, so at least that is happening, but it, it's not that great a price either. Almost 11,000 for the sellers, 9,800 for the buyers. This does show, I think, um, that um, the fact that we, we do go below uh, 10,000 discs or touch 10,000 discs for quite a little bit on the average prices does, in my opinion, mean that, yeah, there is still, this is all of the supply this is the demand there is and so in order to get those average prices it means that there are suppliers producers that are just impatient enough to say i'm just gonna dump it at 9800 at least i've got that and i'm done with it uh, and and so that's why we see this pressure on the price it's again a lack of demand organic mortar applicators also had that little bit of speculation up to 1.1 million in march and uh, a little bit of oversupply after that we dumped uh, dropped down to 950,000 disc. We're still there on the average, I would say 1 million for the sellers, 900,000 for the buyers. So I think speculation on uh, with, with no concrete news on structure stuff, uh, I think that uh, people are speculating a little bit less on this at the moment, that, that there's more structure stuff on the horizon. After that, we get the robotics market that was really struggling as well. A very steady decline since July, since the blackout, basically. And uh, we're seeing, I'm seeing some signs that we're trying to form a bottom. But will we choose 80,000? Will we choose 85,000? It is very difficult to say. 89,000 now for the sellers and still 81,000 for the buyers. If you want um, something that, that is potentially uh, all right, know that robotics have tended historically to always jump back towards 100,000 disc uh, and things like that. So you're already looking at potentially 20% premium on an investment now, but keep one thing in mind, of course, um, it could take a very long time because we have been in this lack of demand situation for quite a bit. Self-harmonizing power cores here, triple speculation uh, visible in January, February and March spikes up to almost 2.5 million disc, which is definitely an outlier uh, for, uh, for self-harmonizing power cores. 2 million tends to be the average uh, price here. I again think it is speculation on, all right, CCP is going to bring some more structure stuff out there. Perhaps finally NOSIC will get that intelligence uh, structure and things like that. Now we've got um, a little bit more of like a story uh, a driven uh, announcement. And I think that that is part of the reason why it's dropping off. And of course, as well, the fact that everything else in general uh, also is lacking in demand. And so they're seeing an opportunity. You get lots of supply. And here uh, we've basically overproduced because the average has shot straight down to less than 2 million is 2 million for the sellers less than 1.9 million by quite a bit for the buyers so if you want to buy chief self-harmonizing power course 1.8 million is all the way down here somewhere you can buy below the entire chart 
Superconductors next are one exception and I'm very happy with this one because I am producing this stuff and I, in fact during uh, this entire fall season I hoarded all of my superconductors and uh, as a result I'm now able to sell them at a really good price. Now we've got uh, a one year high point 15,000 discs, 15,900 uh, in fact for the sellers, 14,200 for the buyers and uh, really good I've been selling these in batches of 10,000 units I think I still have like 13 30,000 left to go uh, so I'm definitely gonna put up another sell order um, very lucky uh, on my behalf considering what the rest of the uh, most of the other PI materials are doing there's another exception but this one only broke out very recently let's keep that in mind in fact here you can see uh, that uh, in January February we were dropping back down to a pretty bad price of like 8,000 disc but now at the tail end here we are working our way to a one-year high point as well yeah, on a complete lack of supply <laughs> 22,000 discs for the sellers, 15,000 for the buyers. There is bound to now be a strong response in switching of production to planets uh, to test cultures. But on a one year uh, chart here, this is very impressive. More than double the price, almost triple the price in test cultures for 7,500 to 22,000. Um, over the one year this is a massive comeback in the last couple of months very very interesting of course how the producers are going to respond to this in my opinion they're going to flood this a little bit hard but the month may just be strong enough to keep us in a decent range and finally we've got the wet wear mainframes where you, again you've got this uh, early year speculation i think that happened and then a little bit of a, a, a drop off where i don't think we'll just recover again from this one Luckily, it's still 2.2 million for the sellers and a bit above 2 million for the buyers, so we're still on the average for wetware mainframes. So that's it for the PI uh, materials. Uh, next up, we've got advanced move materials coming in at 31 minutes. Like that, as always, uh, we'll start with the carbide uh, stuff and then the metamaterials uh, tied to the Take 2 production, of course, uh, of goods. Not saying too much speculation here, crystalline carbonite staying below average. I may not even go through all the prices on these uh, because. Uh, it's been very hard basically to speculate on this. It's more for me personally as a, a good way to, to keep an eye on perhaps uh, take to demand. Uh, also, uh, depending on, on the different uh, races, so meta switches and things like that can be very visible here as well. And of course, this does help me to speculate on take two ships where I do see lots of opportunities. So, uh, crystalline carbides basically below average and not coming back right now. Fernite carbide is doing well, um, going to 150. So staying a little bit above average very nice on that one uh, which is for minimatar ships then we've got titanium carbide for caldari ships you can see that that big struggle uh, here um, went down to one year low point of high 150 back to 175 but it is still nothing special keep one thing in mind 150 is a low point for caldari and it's actually a high point for um, minimatar so this does show that difference in meta but caldari always been really in the meta and, and as a result they have always uh, remained very popular and so um, much more stable i would say than all of the others then finally we've got tungsten carbide yeah, also really at the low end of its average for a marships on the meta materials front then we've got photonics for galente all right bit of a difference that is interesting so we get crystalline carbonite that are staying pretty low and then the next step i think if i'm not mistaken photonic meta materials are actually moving up in price getting to 17,500 disc and quick look did i buy these Hmm, yep, I bought these for less than 15,000 disc and they're now selling for 17,580. So I could definitely uh, get a little bit of profit out of that as well. I, I bought this dip. It was, it was very noticeably a one year low point. Plasmonic metamaterials also going up in price all of a sudden. 27,500 really. Yep, and that's the one year high point all of a sudden. We should have speculated a bit more on the metamaterials. But this is very noticeable and here I am going to uh, say that this is probably tied to all of the announcements from CCP around moon mining and potentially uh, looking for new uses for some of the results. I think this is my speculation. Let me know in the comments if I'm wrong on that. But this is very noticeable meta materials um, for at least the Galente here Photonic. Nice recovery. Plasmonic, a little bit of a breakout to one year high point. And after that, we get the non-linears. Non well, it's not across the board. This one is staying below average. And then finally, we've got our terahertz metamaterials, which is again for Amar. 
also really stable below average here so um, kind of a weird one but definitely a small sell opportunity if you followed me on this trade here and you bought for less than 15,000 disc you've got a little bit of prof profit in the photonic metamaterials on this jump up then we still have some other advanced move materials like fermionic condensates making its way back to 90,000 disc which is back on its average there's not that much to say here uh, ferrogel staying below average um, but a little bit too late to buy basically fullerides fullerides doing really well staying above a thousand disc and actually able to slowly pull away from that we're talking almost 1200 disc for the uh, sellers and definitely a bit of a lack of supply that's starting to show up here in fact uh, a reverse here where the perimeter trade tower actually wants to sell them for more than in Gita 4.4 so they're struggling to take this market over but uh, yeah if you can produce full rights you're definitely in a good spot hypersynaptic fibers went to one year low point recovering just a little bit from that but uh, yeah definitely too early to sell and too late to buy yet again nanotransistors um, slight decline but still a very respectable price on this one year chart here phenolic composites staying around average and then still ceramic fibers yeah staying below average so there is not that much to say in the uh, advanced move materials except for the photonic and the plasmonic metamaterials that do uh, have a very big swing in price all of a sudden let's see if there is an impact on the tick two ships here coming in at 35 40. Um, so this is where I actually uh, prefer to uh, put my money uh, to, to risk some stuff. So if I show you guys Dickers, for instance, got a Basilisk for 175, got a Cerberus still for 195 as well. Bought a Heretic at 52 and some Purifiers at 22 million as well. Uh, some trades that I've made, for instance... Um, the Hound 25 to 37 million, Manticore 28 to 34 million. Uh, I feel like purifiers as well, bought for 22, sold for 30. And uh, if you follow this, you know that on the Cerberus, I also made two trades uh, in pretty short order with, with quite a bit of profit. I really love the take to ship market for that speculation. And if you go, for instance, for this Aries chart, I think you can see why bottoms 25, 22 million highs 35 million and you do have these um these nice uh, spikes where you can get that going uh just last week i think we were at 25 million and i said perhaps you could try to buy some aries look at that we're back at 30 million for the sellers bit worrisome 400 units being sold here but uh, the buyers are staying below 25 million so you could take a little bit of profit on this one it is definitely not as juicy as what we would like to see uh, basilisk which i bought for god damn it 175 still struggling well 205 million could make some profit on that but buyers at 173 so if you want to match my trade you can definitely still try to grab a basilisk um not the best of charts here but of course the potential to 250 280 does exist so i think that my purchase still makes sense i may just need a little bit more um time for it to materialize uh and who knows with uh, with what might be happening in the eclipse we might see uh, some need for some logistics cruisers. Then here we get the Cerberus. Here are the two lovely spikes, of course. Bottoms 200 million, highs 280 and even 300 million isk. This is where I made some trades. On both occasions, I bought too early and I sold a bit too early as well, but I made a decent profit on these. I tried a third time, uh, as you know, bought for 195. I could sell now for 233, but I'm gonna wait for a better opportunity. Buyers up to 213 though, so your buy opportunity is definitely over in the Cerberus market. On the crow, uh, oof, that's a weird chart all of a sudden, not really showing that well what's happening. Um, oof, and this is a very weird five day moving average. I'd say there's something really wrong, maybe an outlying, oh, something happened here, a zero isk trade. Um, some error maybe in the database or something like that uh, is making this one really weird. Right now we are, and my stomach keeps growling, I hope it doesn't come through too much. 32 million for the sellers, 28 million for the buyers. And honestly, that is not where you want to be speculating on, right? Lows at 25 million, that's where you want to buy. And you can clearly see that you can sometimes sell for 35 million. So uh, very weird chart here, a bit bugged. I would say that uh, we're not in the right spot for any speculation on the crew right now. Uh, then we've got the Guardian. 
lovely chart in my opinion very clear cuts as well below 200 million that's where you can try to uh, really grab some cheap guardians and you get opportunities one two three four five times uh, uh, in in the last year Short to five day moving average is still above that, but buyers do tend to have a nice premium uh, on on these um, on these low points because well if there's just no demand for that uh, you can tend to buy these really cheaply and then the high bound is at 280 250 million pretty easily 25 percent or a bit more than that not that bad and especially how lovely and wavy this is one two three four five very defined sell opportunities as well right now 224 for the sellers 195 for the buyers a little bit in the middle of the chart so unfortunately not the right time to be speculating on this one after that we've got the hawk uh, that was a suggestion from you guys uh, probably a little bit to keep an eye on what might be happening with the popularity of the abyss uh, this is a very um, popular ship for that activity you get a little bit less speculation on this one but in the last couple of months, we do have some very impressive performance from 35 million to 50, dropping back down to 35, going back up to 45, and then going back down. What we, of course, don't like is the decline in the spikes here, but we're only talking two of them right now. 39 million for the sellers, but 32 million for the buyers. If you try to get 32 million to show up right here, that is definitely pretty low already. So uh, if you see big volume numbers, 504 that's a bit of a problem 35 30, 30 quite a bit of supply i could I, I could see you grab one for well below 35 million at this point which could be a pretty good opportunity after that we've got the heretic um interdictors still not the ones that i want to actively uh, be speculating on so what i'm mostly doing is expecting that CSP at some point is going to do something for the heretics which is why i try to buy at the low points bought one for 52 million very happy with that and uh, right now unfortunately things are stabilizing so what i did like to see was supply completely drying up and is going up to 90 million isk after that's a bit oversupplied as we drop down to less than 60 million on some days for the average that's where i bought a uh, heretic for 52 million lovely opportunity to buy so much below the chart i had to, to risk it again um, uh, but now we're basically just moving sideways and so not really a sell opportunity buy opportunity maybe just but uh, it's gonna be a lot trickier i think to to grab one of these uh, because you can clearly see that people are starting to compete here again the numbers are not that unreasonable and so uh, as a result i expect it to be far trickier this week than like a couple of weeks ago when i bought that heretic for 52 to actually trigger these uh, buy orders which is also why of course competition goes up here 53 53 5 and uh, yeah we're, we're going up quite substantially all of a sudden in that as well next up here we get the hound if you love speculation then this looks like a good chart and we're at 35 million the high bounce it looks like uh, probably 20 days ago you could have bought these for well below 25 million right now selling for 34 buyers force up to 26 uh, definitely a sell opportunity for the hound for those that bought them unfortunately i put my money into some other ships of that we've got the ishtar our pve platform uh, i keep it here because it's one of my favorite ships to fly super versatile great for pve and pvp in my opinion uh, a drone ship our pocket carrier much more stable of course because of its popularity uh, for a tech 2 cruiser 100 to 200 a day is quite significant 240 for the sellers 217 for the buyers bit of a gap opening up on this one uh, and and new supply is not that plentiful so who knows perhaps some volatility could be in the making if that gap keeps widening after that we get the manticore market that's doing quite well i would say 35 million on average 37 million for the sellers 29 million for the buyers if you have some cheap ones from a couple of months ago then you can definitely try to sell them at the moment for the munin we've got further declines interesting data point here going to less than 200 million we're talking 222 for the sellers and 210 for most buyers 210 on the chart i think is quite reasonable not the very best what is very noticeable of course is that we are in uh, a very sharp decline a second leg down as well so do we see quite a bit of supply here well, a decent amount of competition but nothing too crazy uh, that's unfortunate if we had seen like dozens more and, and maybe one big 100 plus sell order here on the munin i'd say you'd had a very good chance to actually grab one like below 210 million because it's only one buy order right here but unfortunately supplies are already drying up here a little bit and as a result i think uh, competition at 210 is only starting 
After that, we've got our Nemesis, jumps up to 28 million, 29 almost for the sellers, 23 million for the buyers. Unfortunately, not the range that I would love to trade in, but if you need to take that profit you bought for close to 20, um, you can definitely do that. Dioneros um, has some potential, but look at that uh, for uh, for logistics cruisers. Uh, the, the volume is really low here, less than 20 a day, 25 a day, something like that. Uh, 209 now for the sellers, which is quite reasonable. 180 for the buyers. But look, this is all the action basically in this market. We could still look at the player on trade hubs. Yeah, a couple more orders, two ships basically. <laughs> and the, these five are like 11 jumps out. But that's really it. Um, so this is just a tiny market that makes it very difficult to speculate on. So I really uh, only do so when we very clearly reach one year low point, which is below 180 by quite a bit. After that, we get a purifier, and this one is quite a bit better, especially first part of the year here. Dips to 30 million and below, highs to 45 million and above that. Then with this massive drop off, and then now here we've got this speculation coming back a little bit. Apparently, 25 million is the new bottom, 35 million is easily reachable. In fact, we're there right now. 34 million almost for the sellers, 29 million for the buyers. Do I have purifiers? Yep, I've got these bought for 22 million, so I could definitely make some nice. 50% profits on these trades. Uh, it's probably going to be worth a trip to Jita at this point. For the Sabre, all right, finally some movement here up to 75 million almost. 72 million now for the sellers, 65 million for the buyers. And unfortunately, I'm seeing 62 here, 39 here, a bit more supply. If this dried up more, then. Um, that would be very interesting because we basically have a repeat pattern from the heretic that after a completely uh, dry supply uh, situation that, that caused the price to spike to 90 million is, let's keep that in mind as well, we had massive oversupply which created this buy opportunity and that is the main reason uh, that uh, I managed to grab one for 52 like well below the entire chart for the Saber for the Saber We're still buying at 65 and uh, we could go quite a bit lower in my opinion And then the high point well, it is a one-year high point, but the supplies are still decent So we need to see this to continue or we hope basically what I'm hoping is an overreaction in production But right now I feel like people will still be wary enough from doing that and not see this as a massive opportunity to uh, create sabers just yet because well there's still plenty on the market and um, yeah we'll, we'll need to see of course I'm on the lookout here basically for good purchases and this could just be the trigger for oversupply but it might just uh, not be enough uh, because supplies are still decently plentiful Scimitar next, um, staying above 200 million, right on the average, 218 and 193 for the sellers. Not too much to say here, that is basically uh, too early to uh, to buy and too late to sell. And then the Zarmast, we're keeping this here for an eye on the Triglavians. Not too much speculation on that just yet, but of course, who knows what Eclipse and the continuation of the Triglavian storyline will bring to Tech 2 ship production or uh, just track ship production in general right now. It looks like we are pretty stable for this decently newly introduced ship here um, Slightly going down in price as production ramps up uh, and people find their way towards uh, Everything that's needed for the Zarmast or Zar Zar Zarmast. I think we're gonna pronounce it like that All right next up take three uh, coming in. Uh, well first whoops excuse me for bumping the microphone But yeah, a little bit more uh, drinking People keep telling me to stay well hydrated in these um, risky times, so we're trying to do that. 47, 55, or let's call it 48. And here we have uh, the Tech Tree market, one of my favorite markets to cover, one that I would want to speculate more on, but I've never really had the cojones to do that, um, especially in the cruiser markets, uh, because that one feels off a little bit. But now on the Confessor Hecates, uh, so the destroyer market, uh, if you saw the previous uh, Eve talks, you know that I have been on the money quite a little bit in my speculation on those when it comes to what the price movements would be. And that is because these have been very uh, logical markets for quite a little bit now. 
right now that uh, logical stuff is, is sort of being thrown out of the window with a lot of uh, very speculative moves very big moves here all of a sudden for instance confessor all of a sudden one year high points and a breakout 60 million is for the first seller three ships in gita on the market 45 million i don't know where this is coming from uh, my uh, speculation on that is that um basically tactical destroyers are taking over the meta a little bit because uh, people are expecting tech one ships and things like that to become very very expensive uh due to the the shortage in uh in minerals and in resources in general so this is a very crazy situation um maybe to give you guys that perspective in the first half of the year i would say what we would have are very nice corresponding uh markets where for instance the confessor was being a little bit oversupplied and we went down to 35 million isk but as a result at the same time so early july some of the others actually had a above average price of like 45 million and then the jackdaw was also dipping a little bit uh, and then the zweepel had a decently strong july almost able to stay uh, around that 40 million is so what you would basically see is that whenever uh, a price would shoot up on a lack of supply production would switch to that uh, to that ship and then, then it would drop off a little bit from the others creating these these lovely and rather contained waves around 40 million with a little bit oversupplied here uh, below that uh, but the uh, supply would then drop off and then we would start to move back up in price and at the same time we'd have this, the, the reverse in the other destroyer so very very lo logical uh, markets that that worked well together where uh, the the industry basically took opportunity and and switched supplies as you would expect then here in the winter we had this drop off on general oversupply in the market across the board i actually uh, bought um at that time as well and then we we came back here january february a bit more logically uh, as well but then we got this massive speculation that started happening really big spikes in the confessor here and this is like a double take you go down to 35 million which is actually like definitely the low end of or the low bound of the average and then we shoot up to one year high point everything is bought out which is kind of crazy and then you do expect this to happen of course new supply coming in just less than a minute ago uh, two of them coming in at uh, below that but this is this is not really uh, in line with what I was expecting here we get basically uh, a feeding frenzy a purchase uh, fever uh, anything that comes on the market that's not bolted down for confessors seems to have been bought out all of a sudden and so we get this spike to one year high point definitely an opportunity of course to produce confessors and to bring those to the market let's see the Hecate had that last week and is staying at that premium 58 million for the sellers 53 million for the buyers and this is really uh, leading me to believe that basically um, tactical destroyers are going up uh, because of a meta switch people need these fly these want these uh, because but they're doing this rather than other ships uh, that uh, are not really nerfed or anything like that but I'm guessing are gonna are expected to become far more expensive then here we get the jackdaw uh, went up to 50 million isk but it's basically lagging behind a little bit 48.5 million for the sellers 43 million availability is still quite good so of course now looking at what happened to the confessor looking at what happened to the uh, hecate the jackdaw in my opinion is a better ship because it's a missile ship it's a shield ship you've seen me uh, do exploration in these jackdaws uh, it's a crazy good ship i would say i, I would dare to say that it's the right time to still try and buy these before they have that same jump up to 60 million and above that but it it does feel a bit more risky because i can't fully explain why these incredible spikes are uh, are happening and then finally we get this vapor uh, which was my first prediction so basically what you can see here is we had this jackdaw spike here in february which i was saying it is going to take some production away from the other ships then the hecate uh, was staying decently stable uh, but above 40 million so still a very reasonable price and then the confessor went up here as well in march and that's where i said well it is time to try and buy some vapors because uh, they are going to move production to the confessor uh, we are going to see production move to the jackdaw and as a result we should see a drying up of this vapor and that's exactly what happened and right now uh, we actually have a double jump in this one as well up above 50 million is 53 million for the sellers 45 million and so this vapor is considered i think in the meta the least good uh, tactical destroyer the jackdaw the best and yes this one is still the most expensive and so last week i said i 
I can't explain this one anymore uh, because I mean this drop off would have been normal the second jump up I don't understand it the confessor crazy buyout up to 60 70 million is very weird as well so this is where I'm saying this is not the same uh, supply uh, demand dynamic uh, that we've seen basically over the course of the last year that worked very well and it becomes very difficult to actually predict this market now if I'd have one gamble to take right now it would be the jackdaw um, to also go in price compared to the availability of like the confessor of the Hecate uh, the Svepel yeah but the least popular one so I'd say that this is normal and even more expensive we should see if people want tactical destroyers we should see a feeding frenzy on the jackdaw so if you can buy these now for let's say 45 million is I think that that is still definitely possible uh, that uh, I'm personally expecting that to jump up but uh, I'm not as certain as uh, as when I predicted uh, the move in uh, excuse me in this vehicle for instance and when I also predicted uh, the move in the confessor because of uh, the low point here when I was saying well this is too much people are just gonna hold off from the confessor production at all and then we are gonna see a, a, an increase in price on that one and uh, yeah that Heike jump unexpected as well uh, the jackdaw stability now is what uh, i feel is uh, is the weird part the jackdaw being the cheapest tactical destroyer just feels completely unnatural so i'm expecting that one to catch up uh, anytime now let's move on to the cruisers here is the legion chart that is finally dropping off now uh, on the uh, cruiser market uh, while we're also seeing some lovely wavy movements and things like that it always felt very risky to me uh, because um, we even had a low point on no supply could not explain that at all but uh, it looked like it was uh, in the end a uh, good time uh, an opportunity to buy on the other hand of course uh, i feel like these markets are uh, ripe for uh, manipulation they're basically small enough uh, that uh, a player with uh, even relatively uh, shallow pockets can make it pretty big dent in it so here is the legion uh market you can see this is all that's available we're dropping down in price on just a bit of supply down to 185 million um so we're still at a very reasonably high price well above average for the year uh but we are dropping off finally are we doing the same in the low key all right we're off the highs but we're definitely hesitating to go away from the 300 million range 320 for the sellers 256 for the buyers so that one still needs a little bit of time still by far the most expensive tactical cruiser out there then we've got our proteus that's actually uh, going up in price so here can't really explain this proteus the least popular one going up to 190 million becoming more expensive than the um than the legion why really not sure when you could have bought this for 150 just a couple of weeks ago when the legion was going for 190 million isk very very strange uh stories here in the tactical uh cruiser market but we're definitely noting that the volatility is here even here in the tengu which is the pve ship in my opinion as well that should have more stability you can also see the range in the first part of the chart is a lot more narrow uh, yeah we lift off from 150 and we go up to 250 million right now we are back below two 196 168 for the buyers where do we go from here i don't know so this tactical destroyer market always felt very risky uh, but even the um the proteus is now uh, you know becoming a victim of that volatility shooting up to 190 so if you manage to buy this for 150 uh, if you can buy one now for 150 uh you can you can make a decent amount of profit by trying to sell right now as well how long does this last i don't know what is happening i don't really know especially in the cruiser markets uh, because all of this is really happening on not that great an availability i mean look at this how many loki's are in there on the market we're talking 320 million a high point you would think that we would have a lot of supply coming to the market last 24 hours we've got two ships that that just is is not normal someone with would only need to buy what four five five dozen ships and and you could buy out everything that's available in jita is it something with player on trade-ups no that's like um 14 jumps out it's it we're talking two ships <laughs> in the perimeter trade tower that to me is uh doesn't feel that normal which is completely different uh, in the destroyer market where these um 
these price jumps have been met with massive supply increases and in fact have sometimes like here with the confessor uh, caused oversupply and a predictable buy opportunity as well uh, the fact that the loki is going for more than 300 million which is so much more expensive than anything else and yet we're not seeing uh, a production or a supply response here even from people that are holding loki's uh, to me feels very very crazy but um, yeah it does mean that we have these incredible price swings as well uh, which uh, of course can be very good for speculators as well and that's it for the tech tree mirror market and we still have the extra products and uh, oops sorry about that uh 59 15 um, we are going to uh, take a quick look at some compressed ores. So uh, it's something that I think I speculated on a little bit when we were covering the dev blog uh, about uh, the uh, change that CCP, CCP is planning for the general ecosystem in EVE Online. Um, and now we also see a switch balance of power, a change to the balance of power in New Eden. The drought phase, they want to bring us to like basically a real shortage where income is not enough, you could say, for the game. And what all of that should, in my opinion, in incentivize is trade um, and as a result i think compression all of a sudden becomes very important and so i think if i just go for compressed then we might get a list for compressed ores there we go now it is a massive list we're not gonna check all of these uh, i don't want to be here for another hour Although I love making Eve talk and there are some limits for me as well. But let's take a look at some of these that I, I remember. Arcanor, definitely a very popular uh, product. And look at that. Compressed Arcanor, one year high point, was like 300,000 before and is now selling for 555,000. It's pretty easily. Availability clearly down as well. Um, so that's pretty good. Uh, Plyoclas, I'm expecting a little bit less. It is still a high point, but at 8,000 disc, this is mostly known for Mexico. So as a result, I was expecting a little bit less and that's exactly what we got here. Uh, but it's still a one year high point. Uh, then we're definitely interested in Velspar, of course, Tritanium, the biggest winner. So let's see if I can find the V down here. Here we go. Compressed Velspar. Yeah, massive, massive breakout. 1500 to 2000 disc as the normal price for most of the year. We rarely break the 2000 disc barrier. And right now, 3000 for one seller, 3500 disc for more. It again shows the value of compression. Just to give you guys a little bit of perspective on that as well, from me in game, I have actually been mining a little bit in my Orca as well. And uh, I could definitely see like a 30, 40, even 50% jump in the value of my ores just by compressing. So it is very, very uh, impressive. Pyroxeres, uh, not doing that well, but clearly trading above average as well. Uh, Densfeld Spar should be popular. That's basically the most titanium you can carry in one item. 2000 disc on average, and we're talking 3000. 800 is for most sellers almost a doubling of the price um just gonna go through a couple more dark ochre uh, 75 to 180 that's more than double the price uh, and then there are some ex oh this is ice uh, ice is, is, is not doing too well uh, fuel is very cheap at the moment flawless arcanor clearly a one-year high point as well compressed jasper all right another uh, exception on this one kernite what's kernite doing not, I mean, it's up. It, well, it's actually up, yeah, indeed. 20,000 discs, up uh, about a third of the price and uh, also close to a one-year high point. So it's still still doing all right. Here is a better chart to show the Kernite development here. There are clearly some that are doing better than others. Look like uh, compressed massive Scordite, 2,000, quite a bit. 4,000 discs right now. Sellers, 4,600 discs for compressed massive uh, Scordite. Very, very impressive. Umber, um, one exception, uh, clearly Umber. Uh, why? I think Isogen. Isogen is still not that hot of a commodity. And uh, if I'm mistaken, Umber is a massive source for that one. Um, so, yeah, we, we can definitely see, though, that for a lot, a lot of these uh, ores, compression has become very, very valuable. Uh, 
Of course, minerals themselves have gone up in price, so that's a big part of that mix. But I personally expect this to really be able to last because of the announced changes by CCP, uh, where all of these shortages, that resource redistribution, and the fact that they clearly stated in that uh, dev blog that they uh, want to do uh, to get away from all of that self-sustaining small ecosystem stuff uh, that uh, they've actually been pushing very hard in Nosic for a long time uh, does mean I think that the trade is going to make a comeback uh, in, a, in a pretty big way and thus compressed stuff is very very important beca because it is a way to move lots of stuff uh, in a reduced amount of space actually yeah space cargo space could once again uh, become something that is very important uh, my personal hope would be that we can once again uh, see uh, trade caravan caravans becoming uh, something that is needed uh, and, uh, and, and that would find their way back into the game that would be very impressive to see uh, maybe a video on an ambush on a trade caravan uh, from maybe an alliance or maybe even independent corporations incorporated uh, that would become uh, more nomadic than what they are now and uh, focusing actually on, on on doing trading and things like that I, th I see that as full of potential for lots of fun and lots of more uh, di dynamism or, or dynamism uh, in in the game so uh, yeah good news in my opinion let's see that compression go up in value even more and that's gonna be it for this if talk guys thank you very very much for watching and as always I'll see you next time